Hello, meal preppers. All right, we're on to day two. Yesterday, your assignment was to go prowling the interwebs for new recipes. In the email you got yesterday, you got lots of apps that will help you do this, Pinterest being one in particular, which I love. And remember, we've created the meal prep challenge group Pinterest board so we can all share our great ideas with each other. If you haven't had a chance to do that, just spend some time prowling. And this can take some time to build up a collection of recipes for yourself. Now what I do is I just use spare time when I'm standing in the grocery store or waiting for kids at practices and rehearsals in school to collect more pins just to keep a good variety. And there's always new great ideas out there. So finish up your prowling and now today we're gonna to move on to the second P, which is planning. So what I want you to do is print out the template that you received when you signed up for the challenge and you'll see a calendar that goes Monday through Sunday. Typically what I do is I will do my planning on Friday for the coming week, Monday through Sunday, the following week. And this way it gives me time to get to the grocery store and do my prep so I'm ready to go when that week gets there. So I usually sit down on a Friday afternoon and one of my biggest tips to you, because sometimes it can feel lonely being the only person in the household planning for everybody's stomach. So my tip to you is to ask everybody in the house to to give you one meal plan idea for the week, for the main meals. So in our household, we have four people. My husband is in charge of cooking Saturdays. Usually he double batches it so that Sundays after church, we can warm up whatever is left over and add vegetables and it makes it a little easier on Sundays, all right? So that takes care of two days for me. Then I have two small people in the house that each pick a day, which really only leaves me with a couple of days a week to have to plan. All right, so it also, the thing I like about having the family involved is it helps them get involved with making healthy food choices at a young age. And so even if they pick something that is maybe not in the healthy realm that we might eat, we can always find some sort of recipe that will sort of put their choice. Let's just say it's mac and cheese. We can always find some kind of recipe that will, we can healthify. So they can still get what they want but I can still teach them that there's ways to have what you want and still make it a little bit healthier, all right? So I, I encourage you to incorporate the people in your household to help you plan. So the first thing I want you to do is look ahead to the coming week, pick your busiest crazy days and put a star by them. Those are going to be the days that you're gonna pluck in the easiest meals you can find. So oftentimes it's crock pot recipes, the ones that you can just put in like chicken and salsa and let it be. Pick the very easiest recipes you can find for those days because I want you to have a really big win, especially this first week, to see how easy meal prep can be. Don't get super gourmet this first time around. Okay, the other thing to think about when it comes to those busy, crazy days is sometimes you just need to rely on convenience foods. And by convenience foods, I don't mean fast foods. I mean, search your grocery store for foods that are convenient but still healthy. For example, rotisserie chicken. Many stores now are serving organic, uh, anti-hormone, -hor um, antibiotic-free chicken. So rotisserie chicken can be a lifesaver on a crazy busy day. Bagged salads, um, you can get prepared vegetables, you know, broccoli and cauliflower that's already cut up. That is gonna save you some time. And not only that, but oftentimes it's the mental barrier of thinking that, oh my gosh, I have to wash the vegetables, I have to cut the vegetables, I just don't wanna do that, I'm gonna have popcorn, right? So eliminate the barriers. And there are times that you're gonna need those convenience foods because you just don't have time, but you can still eat healthy. One other trick that I use often is every week I go over to the butcher and I find a steak or some chicken, or sometimes they already have these um, carne asada meats chopped up in little cubes. But if they don't, then I ask the butcher if they can slice the meats for me. Because number one, it saves me cleaning up the kitchen and the prep. They have it all there ready to go. That's what they do. Um, you can ask them and they'll do this for free. And um, I usually will have chicken, sliced chicken on hand or sliced beef on hand, put it in the freezer so that on a busy night, I know that at the very least I can brown up some of that throw it in with a salad or some of those prepped steamed vegetables, and we have some healthy foods that are really quick and easy. I also often use those for lunches as well because sometimes I may not have enough leftovers for my lunch, but I know that I have those quick and easy to saute meats ready to go so I have protein on hand. Okay, 
So those are convenience foods. Think about using convenience foods and just having a simple but healthy meal on those really crazy nights or choose the easiest crock pot recipe that you can find. All right, so you've starred your busy days and you've plucked in the easiest meals, the dinner meals. Now it's time to pluck in some of the other meals that might take a little more prep, which we're gonna take care of, so don't worry about the prep. But still pick some fairly easy meals to get started with and put those in. I like to look for a variety of meals, so maybe a fish one day, a chicken the next, a pork the next day. I just like to shake it up a little bit so we're getting a variety of nutrients and a variety of tastes. Um, you can do whatever comes easy to you. This is just a template for you. If you like to eat the same thing every day and you know that that's gonna work for you and that's how you're gonna stick to eating clean, eat the same thing every day, whatever it takes for you. I will also encourage you, when you're planning these meals, think about planning extra for your grocery list so that you can have these for leftovers for lunches or even breakfasts or what comes up in your week or even like a leftover dinner meal. So make sure that you're planning ahead when you're creating that grocery list, which we'll talk about in a second, so you have plenty of food on hand to try to get to the grocery store one time a week. Another little tip that I have for you is that when I'm planning my side dishes, I try to make sure that I plan things like the, the hearty vegetables that last a long time, like cabbage, cauliflower, broccoli, Brussels sprouts. Those can last several days in the fridge beyond things like spinach, cucumbers, uh, tomatoes, the things that get squishy quickly. I usually put those hearty things toward the end of the week because I know they're gonna last, okay? So kind of think about that when you're planning out those side dishes because when you're planning out those main meals, I want you to be sure that you're planning in the side dishes as well, the extra vegetables. We in our household usually will have our main meat dish a side vegetable like broccoli and then a salad. Almost every night there's a salad. When I am planning my meals, I plan lots of cabbage, spinach, green um, leaf, leafy green lettuce, kale, different things that I can use for a salad. And I and the prep time, and I'll show you how I do this. In the prep day, I make a huge salad. And then I'll chop up things like cabbage and things that I can fluff the salad up throughout the week. So we always have a salad on hand because it's really easy to have a prepared salad and plop it on the plate. And all you had to do was steam some broccoli and cook your main, your main meal. So start with the main dishes, then go fill in, look at the leftovers, how the leftovers can roll over to lunches, even for the kids, um, and make sure that you're including things that you're gonna need for snacks, things for breakfasts, things for lunches, for the whole family. Because if you can get to the grocery store once a week and you can get everything you need, you're gonna save yourself a ton of time because every time we go to the grocery store, it's probably a good 30 minutes, even if we just run in and grab one little thing. By the time you find a parking spot, run in there, check out, get in your car and get going, it's probably about 30 minutes. And if you did that three times a week, that's an hour and a half in the week. I can do a lot of things in an hour and a half, including prep for the following week. So try to save yourself that time. You're also going to save money because you're gonna have less impulse buys when you go to the store fewer times, right? So we're gonna save time and money and everybody needs that. So try to go to the store All right, once some other tips about the grocery store is when you print out your template that you got in the meal prep challenge downloads, that template is organized according to the layout of most grocery stores. You might have to change it around for your grocery store, but most grocery stores, you come in, you go to the right, you hit the produce, you hit the butcher, you hit some dairy, and then the health food section. You know, it's gonna vary a little bit, but either way, you want to create your list according to the way your grocery store flows. And and healthiest foods are always on the perimeter of the store rather than in the aisles. There will be probably a few things you need to grab in the aisles like your spices and condiments, but just stick mainly to the outside of the store. All right, so when you organize the list, there's a few things to remember. You wanna make sure that you organize it according to the way your grocery store is laid out. This is gonna save you tons of time and money because you're gonna have less impulse buys when it comes to um, you know, running past those end caps and grabbing whatever little goodie looks great, all right? So 
You also want to make sure on your grocery list that you add all the quantities for all the different meals. If you need an onion for your chili and another onion for your soup and maybe an onion for some casserole dish you're making, you need to make sure that you tally up how many onions you need. I know that seems obvious, but sometimes people go to the store, from what my clients say, they go to the store without a plan and they just sort of grab and pick and then things go to waste. By calculating exactly what you're going to need for all those recipes or all those meals, then you're going to, you're going to eliminate a lot of the waste that you might normally have all right so make sure that you're factoring in every onion that you need for every meal don't forget to factor in snacks factor in things are you having extra kids over for play dates are you having do your kids have a, a party are you having friends over make sure that you factor in those things that you're gonna need for other events and other snacks okay so you got to make sure that you have all of that calculated on your list, whether it's tally marks or a whole new item list. Don't forget the condiments. Don't forget the spices. One thing I tell my clients all the time is you really spice up your food. It, what I've been mentioning recipes, it doesn't have to be these big fancy recipes. If you're just gonna bake some chicken breast, spice it up a little differently every time. And baking a chicken breast or a piece of salmon is really simple and you can just change the way it tastes with your spices. Also, when you're shifting from eating a lot of processed foods to healthier foods, Sometimes at first, your taste buds are gonna be like, what is this? Where did all the artificial flavors go? And where did all those uh, different textures go that came in those processed foods? Give your taste buds something to get excited about. Spice things up, lots of curry, turmeric. Um, I love, there's an organic spice mix that uh, Costco has that has no salt. It's got a lot of different flavors in it. So really play with spices. So make sure that you have all your spices available as well. You also wanna make sure that you have your storage baggies complete because when we get to the preparation phase, you're gonna be storing some of these chopped vegetables in baggies or in Tupperware containers. There's a, a brand called Snapware that I really like. It's glass containers. You can buy this online. You can buy this at Costco. They have a nice big set at Costco and they have the snappable lids, but it's glass, which is much healthier to store your foods in glass rather than plastic, okay? So look at that list. Give it a look again. I usually like to percolate on my list for about a day. I make the list. I have everybody give me their um, things that they want me to get at the store. Um, what do they want for their school lunches? What does my husband want for his lunch? Make sure that all the extra people in your house add in things because how many times do you go to the store and you get home and you're just like, I just went to the store and somebody reminds you you're out of toilet paper or dog food. Don't forget the dog food <laughs> and for sure the toilet paper. Get it all in one shot. That's gonna save you a bunch of time and you're gonna be thrilled with the extra times that you have. So again, consider the convenience food. Consider the chopped broccoli and carrots, um, things that come prepared as in not like lean cuisine, but prepared as in washed and chopped vegetables, rotisserie chickens, the meat at the butcher. Go for the convenience foods and it's okay to have just a simple meal with these prepared foods. So you might factor those into a week. And here's the thing. If you factor these into your week, then you can say, oh, Tuesday's easy night. Like Tuesday, I have hardly anything to do to get dinner on the table. All right. And one more thing is consider, and I'd like to challenge you to this, when you're planning your next meal meals, weeks worth of meals, I want you to consider batch cooking one meal. That means cook, pick something like a chili, a soup, or a stew, something that you can cook in large quantities and double the batch and freeze half of it for another time because you're going to be so grateful that you have this big bag of chili in the freezer for those nights that's like, ah, I forgot we had a piano recital tonight. What are we going to eat? So easy to grab something out. My biggest problem with that is I batch cook and I'm like, oh, I don't want to use it just in case I need it for some time. So I want to challenge you. So your homework today is to sit down and make a plan for the coming week, starting the coming Monday. Make your plan, breakfast, lunch, dinners, and snacks. Anything extra that the, uh, the rest of the family members need, all the toiletries, all the spices, and the storage containers. Now, you might be thinking when you go to the store, you're like, wow, I've spent so much money at the store, but have you tallied up how much you spend at the store when you go three or four times a week? It's probably more than if you go one time a week and have it all planned out. Now, this morning you received an email that talked about second shelf recipes, and I'll be sending you some more emails like that 
And those are ideas of ways to use everything that was left over on the second shelf. Stuff that's still good, but maybe you have some roasted vegetables you didn't get to, some leftover green beans or some spinach, like two handfuls of spinach that's not enough to make a real recipe or a whole salad with. I'm gonna give you ideas of how you can use that. This morning's email showed you a soup recipe and I just kept it really vague because that's the whole idea of second shelf recipes. It's take what's on the second shelf and make what you can't out of it. And I challenge you to be a little brave. Throw in some spices and if you're not a cooking person, challenge you just to, just to test it out. Some of these, many of these foods are gonna mix just fine together. And you can put just about anything in a soup and make it taste good. So I challenge you to come up with a meal that you can batch cook. Something that's like a soup or a, a, a stew or a chili that you can batch cook and save one for the coming weeks ahead. And I challenge you to put uh, everything on your grocery list and then make uh, on your meal plan and then make that grocery list organized according to your grocery store layout. All right, you guys go get to work.